Hello everyone and welcome to this short coverage uh, of the uh, of a couple of games that Magnus played in the chorus tournament of 2010. Uh, this game uh, from round 11 against none other than Leinier Dominguez Perez who even back then was a 2700 player when uh, this year he almost qualified for the Candidates tournament. If you remember he enrolled in that uh, one tournament where he started playing but then uh, he realized that he will have to risk uh, too much in order to actually win games uh, you know, on demand and he decided it was better not to not to play and then he uh, left the tournament uh, but yeah uh, let's uh, let's uh, turn our attention to this game uh, it is Magnus with white and uh, he opens with pawn to d4 also a lot of history behind the, the game and behind the preparation uh, he will deliver a sort of a surprise for his opponent uh, in the same variation where Kasparov delivered a surprise uh, for Peter Svidler uh, in 1999, also in this tournament, only back then it wasn't Kors, back then it was Hugo Wayne, a part of the, the Vikanze tournaments. And um, yeah, he, he also delivered a very nice surprise for Svidler, but here uh, they improved on, the, uh, on Kasparov's surprise by uh, an another surprise. Okay, d4, we have knight to f6, pawn to c4, g6, and knight to c3. We have pawn to d5, and knight to f3. And I've mentioned in the previous video, for those of you who haven't seen it, um, uh, this is uh, exactly the time where Magnus was working for a full year with uh, former world champion Gary Kasparov, and, uh, well, obviously they did great work, and Magnus improved immensely during this time. Okay, uh, bishop to g7, we have queen to b3, uh, and now d captures on c4. We have queen captures and c4 castles and pawn to e4 grabbing the full center this is the so-called the russian variation of the grunfeld uh, we have pawn to a6 e5 pawn to b5 queen to b3 and knight f to d7 and here in, in that game that i mentioned although uh it is by far the most popular move in this position uh, kasparov is the one who delivered it first against uh, swidler in 1999 in this exact same tournament uh, and he won the game very nicely but here uh, they go for a, a, a surprising move and that is knight to g5 uh, e6, uh, like I said, even strongest by today's standards, uh, but so many games played with this exact same move, of course, top players know how to play against it. But also, interestingly, uh, in the Linares tournament of 1999, uh, same year uh, where, where Kasparov played it against uh, Svidler, uh, Vishwanathan Anand uh, played h4 here. Uh, against Peter Swidler and also defeated him very nicely in, in a brilliant game. Might even show uh, those two games. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, uh, here knight to g5, a very nice preparation. Knight to b6 and now bishop to e3. We have knight to c6 and rook to d1, just defending the d4 pawn. Uh, bishop to f5 uh, and it is now as of move 12 that this position has never been reached again. So let's see how Magnus continues. Bishop to e2, he prepares the castle. Uh, knight to a5 attacking the white queen, queen to b4 now uh, eyeing that c5 square, uh, and knight a to c4. Okay, the bishop is uh, attacked, also the b2 pawn might hang, so just castles, no problems there. And f6, uh, Lanier goes after Magnus's strong center. So knight back to f3, uh, knight captures on e3, getting rid of the bishop pair, f captures, uh, and now f captures on e5. We have d captures on e5, now opening up an attack towards Lanier's queen, and queen to e8. And here we have queen to c5, going after the c7 pawn, as intended, rook to c8, and now pawn to a4. Uh, a very tricky move where uh, it seems that Magnus is trying to open up the or, or semi-open up the the B file to, in order to grab the A6 pawn, but that could not be further from the truth. Here, knight captures on A4 was played, knight captures B captures, and Magnus does not go for bishop captures on A6 or even a knight to G5, which seems like a great idea, covering these two squares, uh, preparing bishop to C4 check. Instead, he goes knight to D4. It's just a very difficult move to calculate and um, uh, not an easy one. Uh, so uh, here Lanier played rook to b8. Uh, other moves can be considered here, but uh, if you don't uh, see what Magnus wanted with this knight to d4 move, it's hard to make a prediction. Of course, it seems like he just wants to grab a pawn, create a fast a pawn and push it, uh, but Magnus plays pawn to g4. And okay, the bishop has to be moved somewhere. Bishop to e4 is played, and now knight to e6. Rook captures an f8 is also fine, but knight to e6 creates the 
the most complications uh, and uh, judging by Lanier's response, uh, it definitely is so. Rook captures an f1 check was played and now not rook captures but bishop captures an f1. Preventing rook captures, otherwise uh, uh, rook to d8 wins the queen and now uh, pawn to c6. Just nicely defending the pawn, also bishop to d5 might uh, limit the, the rook's influence on the d file. Uh, but here Magnus plays a move that... Um, Judging by the title, uh, you you wouldn't think it's this one, but it actually is. Uh, later after the game, he said, maybe a stupid move overestimating my position. He was in a big time trouble, which explains some of his decisions later on. And Magnus does play knight to g5, which is the top move recommended by the engine. And uh, yeah, he actually thought it was maybe a, a stupid move after the game, but uh, what are you going to do? Even when, when Magnus feels he made a stupid move, uh, it's actually the strongest move recommended by the engine. And now, what do you play here? Well, the bishop is hanging. You have to move it. So, of course, it's going to move to d5. And now, pawn to e4. Challenging the bishop again. Bishop to b3 or a2. You could also play that. But b3 comes with tempo. Now, bishop to c4 with check. King has to move. Or you play pawn to e6. Uh, it's even better. Or you could trade right away. e6 is also fine. Uh, knight captures on e6. We have bishop captures on c4. Queen captures on c4, and here king to h8 was played. Uh, king to h8 is a move that loses the game. Uh, the move you actually had to play is bishop captures on, uh, on e5, but Lanier was very low on time, and he couldn't uh, figure out how to how to go about this. The problem is after rook to f1 and the threat of rook to f8, uh, there just doesn't seem to be a good move. You have to worry about all of the discoveries that the knight can do, and also you have to worry about rook to f8, uh, but there is a move that saves black, and that is queen to e7. Looks like... Uh, the simplest move possible to find, but Lanier uh, did not manage the time to calculate it. Especially now, uh, what what do you play? For example, knight to d, d8, you open up a discovery, king to h8, and now after knight captures on c6 with the triple fork, you have bishop captures on h2 check. So if you want, you can even get a nice draw here. Uh, queen queen will deliver a check. and uh, You can't go here because rook captures on b2 comes with check, and then you're losing, so you have to allow the infiltration of the queen. Queen g3 check, and now you can just go for a repetition, so no worries there. So objectively, it was a draw. However, Lanier played king h8, Magnus was able to confuse him, and now Magnus is completely winning, uh, but you have to uh, figure out why, so feel free to pause the video and win the game for Magnus while I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on winning uh, uh, another fine game for Magnus in the Chorus Tournament of 2010. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Knight Captors and G7. That's uh, that's just it. King Captors and Pawn to E6, and now the Rook is coming to D7. Uh, rook to B7, of course, stopping that. And now you might think, okay, but what now? Uh, well, still... Uh, even though the material is completely equal, it's, it really doesn't feel like an equal position due to the past e6 pawn. And with the g5, Magnus could just limit all of Lanier's options, but he uh, allowed the game to continue a little bit more. He played queen to c3 check, king to g8, and now rook to d6. So his plan is, okay, we're going to defend this pawn and we're just going to win this pawn, and that's uh, all we need. We have rook to e7 going after the e6 pawn, but now just rook captures on c6, and you cannot take here because of rook to c8 with uh, uh, winning of the Queen, Queen to f8, preparing rook e8 if rook c8 is played, and Magnus says, all right, let's trade everything. Rook e8, rook captures, queen captures, queen to f6 now, uh, the black queen really can't move from uh, from the defense of the f7 square, otherwise f7 check and you just push the pawn, or you can, and then you hope for the best. So queen to c8 was played, uh, but Magnus just plays a, pawn to, a king to g2 first. You could start with check, but there's no, no need to, just king to uh, g2. You can't push right, uh, sorry, you can't push right away because this would... Uh, uh, lose you the g4 pawn uh, but now there's really nothing more to be done here queen to c2 check king h3 queen to c5 was played uh, and now king to h4 magnus even going for a nice um, king walk uh, here will deliver or, or rather a king march will deliver a checkmate on g7 Queen to b4 now, hoping for some sort of a miracle perpetual here, but queen f7 check, king to h8 and e7. Now e8 will come with um, a check and then you will capture the black queen with checkmate. So queen to e1 with check, a final few checks, queen g5, queen to e3 with check, queen to f4. And it was in this position on move 45 that Lanier Dominguez Perez uh, resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. If you capture, of course, uh, the pawn is winning and if you don't, you can give one more check. But 
then king to h6, and now how are you stopping checkmate? You have to play queen captures on e7, but now queen to b8 with check, and uh, that's all there is. Queen to f8 check, and now a check with checkmate. So yeah, uh, great stuff by Magnus. He uh, uh, he uh, and uh, uh, Kasparov employed this line where they improved uh, upon Kasparov's line where he defeated Svidler uh, in 1999, also in the same tournament like we discussed, but with that knight to g5 move. So this is the, the, the famous position, e6 by Kasparov, h4 by Anand, and now knight to g5 by Magnus. Uh, good stuff happening in this line, just not for Peter Svidler. Uh, so yeah, uh, very nicely done by Magnus. Like I said, uh, he won the tournament uh, uh, in, in Seoul first place and we will show at least one more game, probably uh, the one against Fabiano Corvana. But if you want, you could, we could also check out these two games by Kasparov and Anand. Maybe a nice uh, Kasparov-Anand day, maybe for the weekend, uh, you know, not, not a terrible way uh, to spend the day. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a little bit about the, the Russian variation of the Grunfeld, if, if nothing else. Uh, I would like to thank Tom from Tipperary, John Anderson, Luke Donato, John Tardif, and BulletChestThriller.com for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.